one of the free options is this Kaggle. Kaggle is a wonderful uh, repository that you have so many data sets. Okay. Um, right. So if you go to data sets, in this left hand side, you can go to data sets. So there are so many, uh, like, for example, if you type um, fruit disease, for example, so there are like apple fruit disease and infection disease data set, guava fruit disease images. It's totally free. You can just download them and train your model. Okay. And similarly for um, like uh, vegetables, okay, or even a, a particular vegetable that you want, right? Um, fruits and vegetables, image recognition data set. See, 2 GB, that, that's a lot of files. It's a huge data set, fruits 360. So that's, that's a very popular uh, data set that so many people use to train their models. Okay, so it's like nine, it has 90,308 images that belong to, that has images belonging to 131 classes of fruits and vegetables. So this is a huge uh, data set. And there are so many people who have downloaded this uh, data set to train their model. So this, these are the different types of uh, fruits I like uh, apples, bananas, uh, you can use it. So we, we, will, we will try a simple one. Otherwise, if you try to um, train this whole thing now, it will take a couple of hours. Uh, so we will try a small, small data set. So which will take only a small amount of time so that you get the idea, okay? So I, I came across this uh, small data set. Uh, it's called uh, apples and tomatoes. I mean, it's not a big deal, but um, yeah, apples or tomatoes. Okay, so it's a small one, only three ninety one files. Okay, we can use it for image classification. So you can just uh, download this, okay? So you can download this, you can say download, you can see the download button here. You can just click on that. So I have downloaded this already, but you can just click on that and download it. So once you download it, uh, you'll get something like, Something like this, archive.zip, which you can unzip, and you'll have a test set and a training set. So the training set is to train the model. Test set is to test the model that you have created, how accurate the model is, okay? So inside the training set, there will be two classes, apples and tomatoes. And inside the test set also, there will be two classes, apples and tomatoes. So what you're going to do is, you are going to uh, train using the images in the train training set. And once you create the model, to check the accuracy, you are going to test uh, use the test set, okay? So that kind of thing. So we will just uh, create something nice. And then we will get to the theoretical part, okay? Otherwise, it will be quite boring for you guys, you know? So what you can do is now, um, specifically how you do it, like technically, what you're going to do is given in your book, okay? The Python side of everything and like what each code does and everything, it has been explained. So I'm going to show you an easier way where there is a platform called uh, Teachable Machine. Teachable Machine that automates everything. Okay, so it, it's it's run by Google. This this uh, this platform is run by Google, so you don't have to uh, do anything complex. Okay, 
So um, you can just uh, go to Teachable Machine. Teachable Machine dot with, do, with Google dot com. Okay, that is the website. As you can see this is the website. You can, if you don't have images, you can use your webcam to train this uh, to train your model, and you can open the webcam and use yourself to generate images. So you can see here. Uh, it, it can identify. We can create models that can identify. Now here, this this lady is uh, uh, creating two classes here, tree and wings, you know, from the body shape, and you can also train voices like snap, clap, like this. You can train for different types of sound waves. Okay, different things can be done. So you have to get started by clicking this uh, get started button. Right. So it will give you uh, two options, open an existing project or a uh, project from drive, open an existing pro project from a file, or else uh, some specific types of projects, audio project, post project, image project. So post project is where you are posing, you're using your body uh, to indicate certain things. Like for example, uh, you can say something like um, what you call this this piece right piece and then like thumbs up something like this you can use those things okay um different things different things okay um we will go for an image project or you can use the audio projects as well so you can identify between your voice somebody else's voice or two different types of sounds Okay, so we will go for an image project. So it will also have two options. We will go for the standard image model, standard image model. Then it will ask for first to train the model. Okay, to train the model. So it will give you two options: train using images from webcam, or are you going to upload the images? So here in our case, we have apples and tomatoes, right? Apples and tomatoes. So we can say uh, class one, we can say apples, right? We can say apples. Just, um, they also have some, uh, let me just go for this. Yeah. So we will we will label them the class one as apples. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it's apples, and class two as uh, tomatoes. Okay. So we are going to upload the images that we just downloaded. Okay. We are going to upload them here, so we can just uh, drag and drop them. So this these are the files that we. Um, downloaded from the Kaggle. So to, we go for the train because this is training. It's training. So to train, we have the two classes. We have apples here. So if you open it up, you have different images of like different aspects of apples. You can just create, uh, save all of them. Sorry, uh, select all of them. Select all of them and then just drag them here. Okay. Drag them here. Sorry. Uh, yeah. First, click on upload, and then drag them here. Uh, okay. Where are the apples? Now I can drag them. Now they are going to be uploaded. Okay. Now they are all uploaded here, and then you can select the uh, tomatoes. So you can drag your tomatoes here. Okay. So control A, you can select everything and then drag them here. 
okay then you can click on this train model okay and if you want to go for advanced features you can click on this and then uh, change these parameters so now this epochs is the number of times this uh, images go through the train so each time the all the images go through one training cycle it is one epoch but you can keep on training for different number of cycles so one cycle one epoch again you take the whole data set again send it through that's two epochs likewise now it is going to try 50 epochs that means it's going to send these images through 50 training cycles and then come up with the model that gets created after 50 cycles okay it is going to send them through the program in batches of 16. Now there are like 130 here. So 16, 32, 48, sorry. Yeah, like that. So in batches of 16. Okay. And this learning rate is how fast, how fast you are going to minimize the error. Because now, when you train these images in the after first cycle there is some error second cycle there is some error you want to continuously minimize the error and how fast you are going to do that how fast you are going to update your parameters is given by the learning rate and you don't want to go too fast then you are going to mix the minimum point if you go too slow, then it will take too much time. So you have to have a compromise between, between not being too slow and not being too fast. Okay? Uh, do you guys understand what I'm saying? Well, um, Martin, I'll be in there. You can ask any questions if you have. It, it can be either in Sinhala or English. It doesn't matter. You can ask if you want any clarifications, one or two questions. Me, Karani, can you explain Sir, can you explain a little bit more about this? Yeah. So we are going to create a model that can identify apples and tomatoes, like differentiate between them. This is like a very basic one. Uh, but you can extend this easily to create a more like much bigger project. So this model is going to differentiate between apples and tomatoes. So first we should be, the program should be trained now first. As I told you before, the machine learning model has to be trained first. So this is the training stage. So we are going to give these images to the model so that it knows, okay, this is how an ap apple looks like. This is how a tomato looks like. So it's going to learn the patterns. It's going to learn the patterns in uh, apples and it's going to learn the patterns of tomatoes. Then it's going to, you know, like a human being, it learns something. Okay, this is how an apple looks like. This is how a tomato looks like. That is saved inside the model. Then that model can be used by the program to identify or differentiate between apples and tomatoes in the future. Okay. They are because that what apple no it akari they are not that. After that, Muslim may get again again no. One of the apple can one of the akari can. In the past, we have seen that apple may get akari killer another one pull. Eva again, Eva again again. Just like that. The machine also has to be trained like that. First, it, it has to learn. It has to be trained. This is how an apple looks like. This is how a tomato looks like. So we are going to give it two data sets that has those features. Then it is going to learn the features. Then that new knowledge will be used by the program to identify apples and tomatoes. There are the so then you can just click on train model 
did start, it was start training. Since we have a smaller data set, hopefully it will not take long. Otherwise, if we have like a huge data set, uh oh. Okay, yeah, it started training. You can see here three, four, five. Now it's going through the epochs pretty fast. So after 50 epochs, it will stop. Okay, it says model trained. Now we can. We don't need the webcam. We want to export the train model. Now. now it has the model ready for us. We are going to export the model. Now it is giving us a couple of options. Couple of options, depending on how we are going to use it. Do we want to use it inside a mobile phone? Are we going to use it for a, uh, inside a computer? Or are we going to use it inside a Raspberry Pi machine like a microprocessor okay so so we can click on download and then uh it again has a couple of options for us whether it's going to be tensorflow js tensorflow or tensorflow Lite. now tensorflow is a ma um, machine learning uh library that is created by google okay and it has a uh, small versions like a light light version like uh, another web version or another one for computers so different versions are there so we can download uh, whatever the version we want this is tens tensorflow light is mainly for android apps okay like if you are going to use the model for a uh, app that we create in the mobile phone then usually we can go with the TensorFlow Lite, okay? Or else if you are going to use it uh, in a web app, yeah, still we can use the TensorFlow. I mean, this can be still used. It's fine. Uh, JS specifically dedicated for like, it's like a JavaScript library, okay? So if you want to uh, uh, like uh, put this inside, put, tuck it inside a web app, we can use this version, okay? So depending on our need, how we are going to use it. So I'm going to use this TensorFlow version. Now TensorFlow models work in native TensorFlow, for example, Python. So that's the one we want. Uh, this is browser-based project, okay? That's not the one we want because we are going to use this with Python, okay? Uh, this is mainly yeah. for mobile phones, okay? So we will download. Uh, are there any questions? Yes. If you have any questions, you can always ask me. Uh, otherwise, okay. Uh, so we will download this one and just click on download my model. Then to download. Model. Ah, it's because it's converting the model because it's converting to this format, then to a download. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now it got downloaded. Yeah, now the practical usage. So that's a good question. Practical usage. Now, let's say uh, you found uh, now there is a new disease that <clears throat> some disease that attack the crops. Okay, uh, some um, bacteria, something like that, attack the carrots, beans, tomatoes, whatever the plant that we use as a food, or um, it can be anything like that. So the, here it's going to be image based, image based. So if, if it visually changes the food product, okay, if it visually changes the food product, that disease visually changes the food product, then 
we can take images and create a model like this. So we have the uh, images for the food product without the disease and with the disease. So we can train a model which can be used by the farmers. I mean, these days farmers, in the sense now, farmers, even farmers have mobile phones, right? Right? So they can use their mobile phones and our model, take a photo, and then identify whether their crops have the disease or not. Okay? So we can create inside our app to give instructions if the test is positive, this is what you should do. Okay, that's the practical use. So we can do something like that. Uh, there is a disease, plant disease, for example. Okay. And uh, yeah, like multiple purposes. You can just, uh, it's just your imagination is the limit. I mean, you can just do anything. That's the main concept. Okay, it's totally image-based, this one. Uh, so it's basically training training your model. So we can we just download that model. So if you go to the downloads, it will uh, be given as uh, something like this. So it was downloaded like this. Okay. Downloaded like this. So we can, um, we can just extract it. Right. So we'll have something like this. So the labels, the labels file will give the label. So zero corresponds to apples and one corresponds to tomatoes. Okay. So if the final outcome is given by the program as zero, that means it's an apple. If the final outcome is given as one, that means it's a tomato. Okay. So now we can use this. This is the model. This is the model. Now, this model is the trained output of those images that we gave. So, this model is capable of differentiating between apples and tomatoes. So, how do we know that? We have to test it in a particular environment. So, how about we create a small web app? Okay. Create a small web app. So, if we want to create a web app, one Python library that we can use is something known as uh, Streamlit. Stream, Streamlit. Okay. So, it allows us to create some easy web apps, like within a couple of minutes or like within one hour, we can create a decent looking web app. Okay, uh, that can do something. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. So before we do that, uh, what we should do, now if we are going to create a web app, we need to have certain code running, not just our model. We have to put this model inside a Python program. We have to put this model inside a Python program okay so i have created a python program like that okay for you so i will uh, i will show you the files that i have uh, okay. let me just So this was created some time back for a different purpose. So we will have to modify that file a little bit. Okay, we will have to modify it a little bit uh, so that it, be, it will suit our current situation. So I will open a new uh, folder. Let me just... Uh... Okay, um, 
So this is for 2023. So I will just call it web back. Okay. Mm. So we will put those files inside. Not a whole lot, it's, it's only like five files. Okay. And there's nothing much in those files. And the other thing we want to add is uh, this model that we created. The model that we created is this, this one. Okay. So we want to include that. We can just copy this inside our web map. Okay. So, and then we need to modify these files a little bit because this was not meant for this kind of model. So I will just. Uh, Modify it a little bit. So this is our, this is the file. I can see it is importing a bunch of things here. TensorFlow, mainly it's TensorFlow, Streamlit. Streamlit is the web app, like the web framework. TensorFlow is the library that does the uh, machine learning part and then this hello it is the part that deals with the images and numpy is the numerical python that deals with the numbers okay now here this is a different model that i had trained before so we will change the name to our model's name what is the our model's name uh keras model dot h5 so we will change it to keras model dot h5. Keras model dot h5. And then uh, this is, we only identify apples and uh, tomatoes. You can easily extend it to anything you want. And uh, one other thing is now here, it says 100 by 100, that is the image size. Now, if you go to the browser for that teachable machine, teachable machine that we did, we used, you can see here it's 224 by 2240. That is the image size here. So we will have to change this from 100 by 100 to the new image size. So this should be 224 by 224. So it depends on the model. Okay. That is the image size. So basically it's going to take the image, the test image, resize it to this size. Resize it to this. And then expand some dimensions. We will prepare that. And then it's going to check the prediction. It's going to make a particular uh, prediction. Now, I hope you guys uh, keep things muted. Um, so it's going to do the prediction, do the prediction here. So the, the prediction in our case is either zero or one, zero or one. Zero is apples, one is uh, tomatoes, okay? So now here it has zero, one, uh, and two as well. I mean, it's four, three, three classes. So we'll have to change some of it. So this has to be removed. Okay. Because it's either zero or one. So if it is not zero, then it should be one. So we can say it's a tomato. If it is because there are only two classes, right? So if it is not zero, then it must be one. So apple. So here also we can say this is uh, just. One is for domain. Okay. 
uh, and then you're going to uh, write the probability. Okay. Probability, like what is the probability? Probability is like when probability for apple and probability for tomato, when you add them together, it should be equal to one because that is the nature of probability. If you add the total probability, it should be equal to one. So the probability will be printed. Okay. Like how, how, how probable you can say 70% of the time this is an apple, 20% of 25% of the time this is a tomato, something like that. Okay. How probable that this is an apple. Okay. Uh, you can write that. So this is the only change that we require here. Okay, I will uh, save this file. So that file was saved. And then we had to do a little bit of changes in the other file. So we don't change this. We have already changed this. This proc file, we don't have to change anything. Uh, let me just open it up. Yeah, it's just, uh, you have to specify which file to run. So that is streamlit app.py. That's it. We are not going to change that because that is the name of our file, streamlit app. And the requirements file. So what are the requirements? So what kind of libraries are required to run this? model to run this model so we can if you open this here um, there are version numbers given so i'm going to remove these version numbers because they are old so we don't need these old versions so the program will decide which versions should be there so i will remove these version numbers okay so that it will use the latest versions okay we'll use the latest versions sometimes we require particular versions to be uh, installed that is why we have the version numbers but here we don't need that we can just allow the platform to decide the latest versions so just keep them so we need tensorflow cpu uh, streamlit we need the pillow to handle the images numpy to handle the numerical part so this is dealing with the machine learning this is really dealing with the web web framework this is dealing with the images this is dealing with the numbers okay so those are different uh, different libraries of python okay so those are the requirements and in this case i have in the previous app that i used i i had to have this python 3.7 runtime environment so i need i don't need it here so I'm going to remove this file. Okay, that file is not required. Uh, so I will just uh, click on Shift Delete. So we only need these five files. So these five files should be uploaded to a repository. Okay, that's the good practice. That is the good practice. So one such place where we can upload these files as a repository is called the GitHub. GitHub. GitHub is like whenever you come up with an idea and create a new program, it's it's where you deposit these things. It's like your repository. Okay. That's the GitHub. So that is like whatever you do in the GitHub, you can write down the dates. This is the date on which I created this. Because everything, I mean, the dates will be in the GitHub. So anybody else cannot steal your work. Okay. Now, when you create a GitHub repository and deposit your stuff there, even in, 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 a, in front of a court of law, you can argue be, before this person created this, I created this. Because some, if somebody is trying to steal your stuff. Okay. So... It's good practice to uh, like uh, save your files in a repository like the GitHub. So it's you can uh, GitHub accounts are free. So I have I have a GitHub account. So uh, I will show you. You can just go to GitHub.com. 
Okay, I uh, will uh, show it here. I'm not sure about my RAM. That's why I'm always being careful. So there is one person who has opened the video. So stop the video. Okay. Uh, so you can just click on this GitHub. Okay. So you can uh, create a new repository. It's new here, new repository. Okay. To put your files. So you can give any name you want. Okay. Any name you want. Uh, we can say now we have, um, and we have apples versus tomatoes, right? Apples. You can say apples. Even apples is available, but we have apples versus tomatoes, right? Apples versus uh, tomatoes. Let's call it version one, okay? Or just one. Uh, it's one. Okay. Now this is available. If there is somebody with the same repository name, then it will say it's not available, but this name is available. So we can we can decide whether it's going to be public or private. Private is uh, if you don't want other people to look at your code, then you can keep it as a private project. Otherwise, if you want other people to know that you created this, you can create it as a public project. And then uh, you can add a small readme file and give some description. So like I can say, um, Classify, classify, classify tomatoes and apples. That is what your app is going to do, right? So then you can give that small, you can give whatever description you want. It's just optional. It's not even required. So, um, and then you can say create repository. Later you can do modifications, but for the time being, we will go ahead with this. So, so it's creating the repository now. Okay, now the repository has been created. Okay, now you can add the files here. Those files that we created, you can upload files. Okay, add files, upload files. And uh, I think I clicked on that. So now you can drag and drop the files here. So we uh, created these files. You can just. Uh, Drag those files here. Okay. Uh, they are being uploaded right now. Hopefully, they will get uploaded quickly. Fingers crossed. Oh. Why? Mm. Mm. It's taking too long. They are small files. Patience, patience is the key. Let's wait a couple of seconds. It will refresh this. I can say choose your files. I will choose the files. But I'm already uploading. I just, I don't know, this might totally mess things. Uh -oh. Let's try it one more time. Oh. Okay, done. 
Okay. Good. Now we can commit commit the changes. Okay. Can commit. Okay. So all done. This is how it looks like. Now we can, we have everything ready. Now we have to just upload it to the internet. Okay. So one such platform is called the Heroku. Okay. Heroku. There is our notepad. It's called Heroku. It's a very famous platform. So we can just uh, go to Heroku. Um, if I open another one, it might, it might get stuck. Mm. Let's just go. Heroku, cloud application platform. Okay, now we can create a new one. New one, okay. Create new app. Now app name, you have to give it a name. So we can say uh, any name we want, but it might be available. Let's <laughs> say like app Tom. Okay, that is only contain app Tom is available. I don't know whether you guys like that name or not. You can just say apples versus tomatoes if you want. That looks more reasonable, right? Uh, apples. Versus. Something like this. Oh, only dashes and yeah. let's see. Okay, this is available. So we only have these two options. So we'll go with US. Uh, okay, now we can create the app. Uh, okay. Uh, now it, it says deployment method here, deployment method. Now we have our files in GitHub. So we can deploy it using our GitHub repository. So we can click on GitHub. Okay. And it will say connect to GitHub. So we'll click on connect to GitHub. Okay, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Okay, now we can say it's on one. Okay, now Dreamboat 851 is that's my username. Um, and Tomatoes versus Apples one, that is the repository name, right? That's the one we gave here. It's this one. So you can just. Uh, what is that? Okay, here. So we can search. Search, search, search. Okay, this is the one. Oh, no, it was wrong. Oh, it's Apple source system. Okay. Apple source system. Okay, so this is Apple's. Apple's versus. Okay, now we have, we can connect to that. Connect. Oh, 
Okay, it's connected. Now we can build our app. It says deploy branch. So we deploy it. Okay. Fingers crossed. Bang. Come on, guys. <laughs> Okay. Oh, it's it's happening. You can see here, so much stuff is going on under the hood. It's just basically creating it. Hopefully, there are no errors. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. It's just installing each one of these in the background. So request all these tensor boards and term color. All these are being installed in the background. So we just had to be patient and wait. Now it's compressing. Now compressing is the final stage. It is going to compress everything under 500 megabytes. If you have more than 500 megabytes, you're in trouble. Oh, it's uh, 452.9 launching. Okay. Now we have a web app. Let's see. Okay. Now we can just uh, we can go to our test set and go to our this is the train set. We have the test set. Hopefully this is uh, let's give this green up. See what happens. Okay. So it says here it's an apple. And it's like, yeah, the water. Okay. Uh, so the total probability is for class zero. That means it's totally identified as an apple. Class one, zero probability. Class zero, probability one. Class one, zero probability. So that means it's definitely an apple, right? So, I mean, just uh, we can even browse without dragging and dropping. We can just, uh, uh, I think it's better if we drag and drop. Just, just, uh, let's try this one. Okay, again, it's identified as an apple. Okay, now let's try. Uh, no, let's try the tomatoes. Let's 
Try this one. Did I drop it out? I didn't, right? It didn't happen. Oh. Okay. It's a tomato. Okay, so it identified this as a tomato. And the previous one as an apple. Okay. 